hello, I am Ditto, and this is Marty. Hi um, we are going to talk about this game, Goner, that I developed originally. Uh, Marty ported it for uh, for the Switch, so we're going to take you through the, the process of that a little bit. Uh, and then at the end of it, we're going to finish with a bunch of questions and answers. Uh, so like throughout the talk, if you have a bunch of questions, you can like try and keep them, and, and we'll get through that by the end of it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so to start with, I am Ditto. I run a little studio consisting of me uh, called Art and Heart. And um, I originally made Goner together with my two friends, Martin and Yuar, who did uh, uh, sound design and uh, composing, so the music and, and sounds for it. And then I did like art and programming. Um, and considering I did both the art and the programming in little under a year, like there was a lot of things that needed optimization afterwards. So that's yeah. where Marty comes <laughs> in. Uh, and do you want to? Yeah, I'll go there. Yeah, so my, uh, my name is Marty Green. Um, I'm programmer at Coatsync, which is a, a studio in Sunderland in, in England. So um, my job was primarily to get um, uh, Goner on the Switch. So which was quite a big challenge, and like I'll go over some of the challenges that we had facing that development. Um, so it was my job to try and get that onto the console, which um, originally it was um, for just PC. So like obviously there was a lot of optimizations and a lot of things that we had to do differently on the console, which it wasn't already implemented. Mm. Right, and then I'll like do oh, um, go to the next slide and then yeah, uh, yeah. So I just want to uh, say also that we have like Raw Fury is my publisher that. Then, uh, to begin with, they, they hooked us up together so that we, yeah. we started talking to each other, me and Coatsync. Um, and they are also the ones that are signed up as like a Nintendo, uh, Nintendo publisher. So that's where I got the opportunity to start working on the Nintendo. So that like, uh, they hooked us up there as well. I'm, I'm sort of just skidding along on a, on a banana skid or something <laughs> through, through, my, through my whole career. It's yeah. quite nice. It's <laughs> quite good. Um, yeah. So uh, a little bit about like what is Goner to begin with. Um, it's a very action-oriented like platformer game, sort of like Super Meat Boy with guns. Uh, was actually where I started. I like try to make try to make that, and it turned out quite alright. Um, it won an IGF for its audio design, which is really cool, uh, considering that was like the least part of my job and the other guys. Like, so they get the awards. Uh, and then we quite recently got like the best debut in the Nordic Game uh, for the Nordic Game Festival, which was a really cool experience. Um, yeah. And also, so then, like, so why would we port it to the Nintendo Switch, right? Like, so to begin with, like, I got the opportunity, and it's Nintendo. So I, I, I don't know about you guys, but like, why would you say no to that, right? <laughs> it's like a childhood dream coming true, and. Uh, Finally, that's that's about to happen, um, and it's also like it's super cool to be this early on in the process because like you, uh, we get to see a lot like behind the curtains of what's going on within uh, both all of these companies and like how the how the console works, and, yeah. and uh, that's been a really cool cool ride, uh, and it's kind of amazing to be like uh, to be trusted with that, yeah. <laughs> both with the technology and like the uh, behind the scenes stuff as well. So it's been a it's been a really fun fun challenge. Yeah, it does. Mm. Yeah. Right, so my job was um, mostly the programming side of Gunner and to try and get that to run on the Switch. So some of the challenges we had were the input support, because obviously on a PC we've just got mouse and keyboard or controller, and that's normally it. Whereas with the um, with the Switch we've got like TV mode, and then we've also got the handheld mode, and we've also got tabletop mode, and there's all those different modes which have to be tested, and sometimes one of them might break, and then you, you won't find out for another few weeks, so you need to always make sure you're testing all those different mods each time. And for example, we had some weird issues where um, if you got one, one Joy-Con in and you got the other one disconnected, that um, you can still play with the one Joy-Con, but then all the other controller doesn't work, so you have to handle all these different states of, like, if the user just takes out one Joy-Con and puts both in at the same time. So mm -hmm. Another challenge we had was um, safe systems. Um, so, like in on on the switch, you have different users, and like we had quite a few issues where you used a different user, and like we had various different crashes which which we needed to fix. So that was quite challenging. 
And then with the Switch, um, by default, there was no player prep support. But like Nintendo helped us out with all that side, and like we managed to get all the save system implemented with that. So we had to create our own player preps. But it's it's not a lot of code to write anyway, so it, was, it only took a few hours to get working. Hey, so most of um, our time was spent on optimizing. Um, like with it being a high-end desktop game, like it was a lot of work to try and get that on a Switch. And like from the like get go, we wanted to try and target 60 FPS on the Switch, just because like it looks a lot smoother in the game with it being a fast gameplay. We didn't want 30 FPS, so that so the whole game runs at 60 FPS, and like. That was very challenging because some levels are really, really big, and like obviously Gunner has a lot of enemies on screen. So we've had like some levels where there's like 300 enemies on screen, and all of them had to be running on the Switch. And I could, like I didn't want to downgrade the art style either because the art style was what made Gunner work. So yeah, so some of the um, challenges that we had. Just get me nuts. Right, so um, like one of the things we done was pooling objects because. Um, on Ghana, we use a lot of bullets on screen, and there's a lot of enemies on screen. And when you're creating them and destroying them, that's obviously ru going to ruin your performance very quickly, and especially on the Switch. So we um, pooled objects, which just means we have a bunch of objects all in a big list, and we only instantiate once, and then we reuse those objects over and over again. Um, another problem, which a lot of people don't realise, is when you're doing null checks in Unity. That's ob if you're doing that every frame. And like, for example, some of the bullets were doing null checks. Um, that's really, really bad on performance. So what we're doing is we'll have bulls, and we just do use bulls instead and like, do it once and try and use the, um, the script execution order to make sure everything's running in a certain way. So you want to try and control your flow if, as much as you can with your code and make sure you know exactly when everything's getting called in a specific order. Because if you don't, then you're going to have to do null checks, which is going to kill your performance quite quickly when you're doing them a lot of times. So for example, if you're using the singleton design pattern, um, if you're doing like if, if this object is null, that if you're going to call that instance loads of times in code, you don't want to be calling do null checks each time. You just want to say, is it destroyed? Is it created at the start? And then once it's, once it's destroyed, just check the bool to false or true, and that will save you the null checks. Um, and another thing with Gunner is, because we have these big sprawling levels, um, there's loads of enemies on screen. And what we've done was, um, if the enemy is not on screen, we don't want to be running the update loops for each one of them. So what we do is, if they're off screen, we just don't bother doing any, um, any checks with them. In next screen. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and I might like just add that that sort of works because of how the enemies in Goner are so like yeah. all the uh, all the behaviors are very simplistic. So it doesn't really matter if they update outside of the screen or not. Yeah. Otherwise, you would have to like I guess optimize what they're actually doing outside of the screen or something. Yeah, yeah. With Goner, like everything's pretty much contained within each room, so we could mm -hmm. we didn't need to bother about like if an enemy starts wandering onto the next room because they just stay in the same place most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so another challenge we had was leaderboards. And then, unfortunately, we had to take the on online leaderboards out of this. So we've still got local leaderboards for the release of the game. And like, hopefully, we're going to try and get that in as an update, because like, it's quite early in development. But, so it still needs a bit more work. But hopefully, we'll get that in a future update, and we should have some online leaderboards, and we'll have like scores so everyone can try and verse each other, because that's kind of one of the main points that made Gunner quite fun. So. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Leaderboards are cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, so uh, like pretty much Nintendo supplied all the plugins for us and ev ev all the SDKs and everything set up. So um, it was really really good for us because even like with it being such an early platform, like, pre like we were one of the first like Unity developers to um, develop for it. Mm. So um, it was great for them to like supply all the plugins. We put them in Unity and like we had something within on the Switch like within like three or four days. So a lot of the even though it took a few months to get the game. Like running perfectly without any crashes, like it was still, it was still really easy to develop for. So like they've done a really really good job. And, like thanks, thanks Nintendo for um, for letting us do Gunner as well. So. Mm. Yeah, and like on that point, like uh, the couple of days to get Gunner running on the Switch is because of all the things that Gunner does that is like PC specific. Or yeah. um, but like if you're if you don't already have a, a whole game, like I I made a bunch of super small multiplayer games for the Switch during the time, uh, just for, for fun. And that is literally just cl clicking the play button in Unity. Yeah. So it's <laughs> the, the plugins are 
making that very easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 yeah, the plugins that the supply does, like, we're pretty much it gives you all the support for the joy cons and the switch uh, the safe systems and everything like that so we just had to integrate uh, integrate them in without within our game so mm. i think for me the trickiest part was like figuring setting up you know the uh, input handling in unity like you you have all these like things and that's usually a pain anyway <laughs> yeah. <set> <laughs> yeah but that was fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you want to do this or? uh <laughs> yeah so like um then a big part of the optimization side of, of uh, getting Ghana to run was the audio. So like I mentioned that out of three people working on the game, two of us are audio people. Uh, so it's been like a huge part of the whole game. Uh, and Goner plays like a lot of sounds. Um, and some like because of the, the codex or something in Unity and how it works with the plugins, um, at some point we had to like limit the amount of, of sound effects we play yeah um, and it was kind of cool because like we already had this ducking system like I don't know if you know what ducking is in, in audio design but it's when you have uh, uh, like if you have a gunshot uh, shotgun blast that plays you want to like duck all the other sounds so all the other sounds like go down a little bit so that you hear the shotgun more clearly and that makes the gun shotgun feel more powerful when you shoot it uh, so anyway we had this ducking system in the game already which was really cool because we were able to like use that as a priori uh, prioritization for which sound effects to then kill off. Yeah. Uh, so like, uh, when I'm writing this like letting prioritize sounds, sound effects play, that means that if a low prio sound is playing, uh, and we realize we're reaching that limit of how many how many sounds we want to be playing at the same time, like to to uh, keep performance running. Yeah. Uh, we would just kill the lower prio sounds, yeah. which was yeah. kind of neat. And it was just a fun effect of like, uh, we wanted this aesthetic uh, effect, like the, the ducking, and that then helped us with the optimization, which yeah. is usually the other way around. <laughs> yeah, so, so that was kind of a nice surprise. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so one of the things we've done with the audio is um, because like we were creating the destroying again, we'd, um, we pulled a bunch of um, audio sources. So we have, say, 32 audio sources. And then we'll reuse all of them, and then we'll try and have a bunch of them for different priority levels, and then we'll just kill off which ones aren't worth it, because we can only do so many sounds on the Switch, and we don't want to like, destroy the performance by having loads of these sounds all playing at once, because the, the PC is fine, because it's obviously, it has all that CPU to be able to do all those sounds, whereas mm. on like consoles, you can't, you can't have all these sounds playing at once. So. Mm. And another thing is um, we load, all the ha load all the, some of the frequencies, um, so, for example, we're using like 44 hertz. We had to lower that down to 22, or sometimes even 11 on like really um, minor sounds. Mm. So, and that that was because um, like the CPU just doesn't have the time to be able to sample that audio source over and over again. So we had to lower some of them down to be able to get that performance. But like later on, we're going to try and create an update, which um, hopefully we'll try and use some new techniques and to see if we can try and get them the frequencies back up so the sounds sound a lot nicer. So. Yeah, so overall, um, the Switch was a really great platform to work on. Like, considering, like, we've managed to port this game within a few months, so it should be out shortly as well. So that's really good. Um, it was a lot of fun to develop for because this is our first time working with Nintendo at Court Sync. So um, it was nice having that, that partnership with Nintendo to be able to create this game. Um, the portability, portability is the big selling point of the Switch, and like. You can play Gone at home if you want on your te TV, or you can take it out and then you can play it on the train. It's just a, it's just a, it's it kind of suits this platform perfectly because it's just a really short game. So if you want to play, you can play for like five minutes and then you might die and then you can play again later on. So you don't have to spend hours playing this game. So it's perfect for the platform. Hmm. It was exciting to explore some of these new features as well, like the the Joy-Con system, and then to try and um, work on different controls methods. Yeah. Yeah, and it was uh, like it was also really fun because it it created this opportunity for us to work together. And yeah, that's been, that's <laughs> been really fun. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that's like what we had for the presentation, and then we thought we would do a bunch of questions and answers. And if you don't know us from before, there's our our twitters and and emails or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone has any questions about um, either the development side or like we have the publisher Raw Fury as well, so mm. we can ask any questions you want. About them. Yeah.
My question is, how many uh, Nintendo-specific things did you have to implement to uh, go through their QA process? Or yeah. is this something which is not? I, I think like the specific number is probably under NDA. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to keep that a bit quiet. But, um, but there weren't too many. Like, no. No, it, it's mostly a, a matter of, like, is it running smoothly? And is it running as intended? Yeah. I see. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, did you use the HDR Rumble at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah, have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we implement the HD Rumble for um, like shooting bullets and um, which is, uh, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, well, I think when we destroy, um, when we kill enemies as well, we use the Rumble as well. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you, um, Nintendo supplied that code as well. That was in their plugin, so we could use that HD Rumble really easy as well. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you consider trying with the audio mixer to get any performance? That's the question I wanted to know. If, yeah. if the audio mixer, if, if you tried it, and if, it, if you did, if it did any performance improvement at all? Yeah. Um, no, we didn't really do much with the uh, mixer itself, no. So most of, it, most of it was just with the audio sources itself. So we have like three different audio mixer channels, which is low priority, medium priority, and high priority. So we use them to to um, put on the audio pool sources as well, but like we don't do anything specific to like manage that side either. So. Okay. Yeah. I should I should mention that like my my general way of approaching development in both in Unity and in other engines that I've worked with is like if I don't really understand the the system like the audio mixers, I will just try to implement it myself. And usually like if I can get it running, then that's good enough. Uh, it's just later that that then becomes a problem. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which tools did you use for profiling and checking the performance and this kind of stuff? Yeah, so um, the pro like the Unity profiler itself like works with the switch out the box. So yeah, we use that for the most part. So that was like one of the surprises is like you can connect straight to the switch, and we thought that wasn't there. But like considering how new the platform is, like that support's already there. So another thing we're not is as well like if you if the switch crashes you can still get back into your unity breakpoints as well so like everything works like you would on mobile or console as well so and like um, the switch gives you a lot of like if it's if it it's a, if it's a hard crash on the a console itself that still gives you a log of everything where it's crashed so sometimes you might get like the stack trace but like a lot of the times you can figure out what's gone wrong and then like nintendo will help us like fix that problems as well so yeah so it's been really good Thanks. Um, I was wondering if you guys were able to estimate how much of a uh, uh, power drain is going on on the switch's um, handheld mo in hand handheld mode. Oh. Yeah, um, it should be about the same either in handheld or TV because the only difference is like obviously you're going to get the extra graphics when you put it in the TV. So oh. yeah, it's pretty much the same sort of performance, and that's one of the things like we spent a lot of time with. Because like, we thought, oh, we might be able to get the extra boost, but we can't because Ghana was CPU bound. So a lot of the time we were. Um, Optimizing the code itself rather than the graphic side. Though the graphic side pretty much ran first go. So, yeah. So the gra the graphic side on the Switch is really powerful. So if you can do a lot more graphics than a lot more gameplay or logic side, then you'll you'll be better off having a game than that. I believe if you take the Switch out of the the cradle, then uh, it changes resolution. But does the plugin handle that, or does Unity itself automatically yeah. change that, or do you have to code that? Uh um, yeah, Unity handles all that stuff for you. So like pretty much we like. Built the built the game in Unity to the Switch, and then like everything worked for the most part. For the TV stuff, it was just the actual input itself that you have to code. So, yeah, all the graphics sides already done for you. So, yeah. okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you for coming out. <laughs>